Hi guys and welcome to your daily tower reading for Saturday the 2nd of April 2022. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm going to use the Swiss tarot cards for today's reading, but I'm just being prompted to talk about the date. Two is relationship and cooperation and numerology. Four is about security and structure. And 22 is the master number of the builder. So it looks like there's a good energy available to all of us here to strengthen existing relationships and to start new relationships. So if that's something that interests you, I get the sense that that's something that's um, available to all of us. And I was kind of prompted to mention it. Obviously, every date of the year is going to have a certain energy, but I feel this is significant and wanted to be highlighted. So let's see what the Swiss tarot cards have to say about Saturday and what energy you'll be working with. So let's have a look. The texture of these cards is really nice. They're a pleasure to shuffle. <laughs> Just FYI. Okay, let's see what is happening. First card is this one. We've got La Lune, which is the moon. Then we have Jupiter, that's the fifth card in the Major Arcana, so that's the Hierophant. That's an interesting take on it, I've never seen Jupiter. And then we have, oh, <laughs> the Emperor. The Emperor is like, what's the word, ubiquitous at the moment. He's been in pretty much every reading for the last week. So the Emperor is a card that's about taking charge of the situation. It's very much aligned with the new moon in Aries that we had on the 1st of April, so yesterday. So that energy is still accessible. And we're really in the season of the Emperor here where it's, it's the cards are kind of prompting us to say, do you know what? We do have a lot of control over our circumstances. We do know what we're doing. Why not take charge of the situation, make your own plans, act independently, and do it. It's not about permission. It's about really feeling the sense of I am an expert in certain areas. And it's good and safe for me to, to act and to listen to my own opinions and to take myself and my desires and my hopes and dreams seriously. So it's, it's great for confidence and for manifesting what it is you want in your life. I really love it. It's so encouraging. So, wow, I think in yesterday's reading, I can't remember, but I also think that we had the moon and the emperor. So it's very similar. Okay, so the moon here, the moon in the tarot is a card that talks about using your intuition to guide you. And in the tarot, the moon is a little bit different to astrology because the moon can also represent fear. So if you think about it, if you're walking around at night and everything is lit up by the moon, then it takes on a very different appearance. Like shadows are longer and darker. Things that in the sunlight seem cute and adorable, like the little lobster. Well, um, they seem scary and frightening in the middle of the night. And here we've got the scene from Romeo and Juliet. Oh, interesting. So again, it's about love. Same way the date was talking about relationships. I've never seen this associated with the moon. So let's see what it's trying to say. Okay, so um, we've got little Romeo here playing. Um, what's the instrument called? It's not a guitar. It's I can't remember. Um, but he's serenading Juliet. We've got his companion here, man's best friend, the little dog. So that's a symbol for loyalty. And that's um, genuine love and, and connection that, that um, supports both people. So the message here with Romeo and his dog is that he's actually reliable. He's someone worth falling in love with. Unlike in the story where they're all, all over the place and drinking poison and stuff. Then we've got Juliet on the balcony listening to the song and she's reaching out saying, oh, I love this, come closer or let's connect. And it's a, 
it's a scene where two people who are in love or the potential for love is there are connecting in a positive way and then the moon takes on a very different energy because it's almost like this this loving scene where the moon now represents feelings and and what's the word it's is it agape love? Like this kind of love that's selfless. Like the love that a mother has for her child. And that's more like the meaning in astrology because the moon represents your kind of uh, selfless feelings, what makes you feel comfortable and the desire to take care of other people and their needs. And also the face here is very calm, and it seems to me anyway, kind of trustworthy. So then we have the lobster, which is this usually associated with the moon, this scary creature coming out of the depths to kind of haunt you in a way. And then we've got love on top of it. So love beats fear. Love conquers all. So if there are things that are scaring you, ask yourself, what is it that I love and pursue that instead? And if there is fear, involved then take the risk because again for romeo to just rock up at her house and to start playing music it's a risk she could either say do you know what i'm not interested get lost or the dad could come out and say if you don't get off my property we're going to have a problem here <laughs> so it's even with love and and all these positive connections sometimes there is a risk involved and you you have to kind of well, you don't have to do anything. But if you give yourself a push, for instance, to go up to someone that you're interested in and to introduce yourself, it's not the easiest thing in the world because you could get rejected and they could say, well, thanks for introducing yourself, but no, thank you. So the card is saying that um, taking action around something or someone you love is going to have a positive outcome, very likely to have a positive outcome because of the placement of these two images. And in fact, if it feels somewhat scary and daunting, it actually means you're on the right track to pursue something that feels um, difficult because the outcome can be something that's beyond your wildest dreams. Next, we've got the fifth card in the Major Arcana, the Hierophant, which is very much about institutions and um, the rules, usually we've got the, the Pope sitting there and two monks at the bottom kind of um, almost worshipping him and some keys. It's this message that there seems to be something in the world that knows more than you and by learning from it, you can understand things more clearly for yourself. And here we've got Jupiter. Jupiter in astrology is the lucky planet. It's the planet of good fortune. So here we've got good luck on your side. And that's probably why the outcome is likely to work in your favor. But Jupiter also is kind of like the, the, the person who governs spirituality. And it's this sense that I know what I feel. I know what I want. There's no real question about it because it's becoming bigger and I feel my feelings very strongly and I know what I'm after, which then helps with the emperor because he gets what he wants. So one, you have all the information you need. This is what I want. I want Juliet on the balcony. And the emperor then says, well, I'm a tough guy. I'm going to go over to her house and start singing, even though it's scary. Then we've got this eagle which is about freedom and your message taking wing or wings and reaching a lot of people. So the spiritual connection, if you, it, it, it doesn't just affect you in a positive way, it affects other people. So if you are connecting with someone in an emotional way, in a romantic way, there isn't going to be the response of, oh, I thank you for you know asking me out on a date, but I don't really know how I feel about you just yet. Give me a week to kind of think about it, and then I'll give you an answer. It's much more likely that the person on the receiving end of your affection, 
knows exactly what they feel and there's major clarity. So again, that's a, a positive if you look at it a certain way. If someone then responds in a in a in a way that's yes, affirmative, let's go on a date, let's let's get to know each other, then you can you can kind of expect that they will actually show up instead of flaking out on you. And if you get a rejection, then at least it's this is how that person felt and the whole thing is done with. I can move on to the next person. I don't have to waste my time waiting and 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 waiting to hear back. But again, it's Jupiter, so it's very unlikely that you don't get what you want here because the the energy wouldn't support you and encourage you to take an emotional risk if you were then just going to fall on your face with it. It's very unlikely that'll happen. So finally, the emperor, we've got the king and he's dressed beautifully and he's joyous and he's in touch with his feelings and he's passionate and he feels safe. And he also feels like he is entitled to pursue the things that he wants because he's the boss and he can make things happen. So that energy is is present here and in the moon card. So overcome your fears, take a risk and expect a good result because you're very, very likely to get it. Number wise, we've got 18 and 5 is 23 and 4 is oy, 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 27. <laughs> Four and five is nine, and 18 is 27. Yeah, two and seven is nine, and nine in numerology is spirituality and completion. So a search that you've been on, whether it's a search for meaning or a search for love, you complete that search by getting what it is you want. And um, nine in the tarot is the hermit. So if you're looking for spiritual enlightenment or a relationship with your higher self and you haven't been able to hear it, you'll have a breakthrough there. So if you make the effort to connect with, with source, the universe, with something bigger, that can be the loving relationship that you attain today. And then it completes that search. So if you're working towards enlightenment, spiritual ascension, those kind of things, that's a relationship that is also very easy to navigate or to strengthen on this day. So I hope you have a great day. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. In my personal readings, I use the tarot, astrology, and numerology. So the way I combine the numbers with the cards, I combine all three in my personal readings. To draw up your birth charts, I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. Once I have that info, I can draw up your natal chart, and that's a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born, and it it shows me a great deal of information about you, your life purpose, ideal career choices, relationships, finances, um, relationship with institutions, academia, education, travel, hopes and dreams, spiritual development, anything that you may be questioning the astrology chart gives a very clear answer so if you do have any questions also about what's coming up in future i use the progress chart and the transits for that and the astro cartography for questions around locations so if anything any of those are of interest to you then please do get in touch with me for a personal reading if you like this video give it a thumbs up please hit subscribe and share the video online have an amazing day and i'll speak to you tomorrow